guys welcome to show 20 among hustlers we got an awesome show today um we got yang yi from wasa right so she does business consulting right so she i mean we can I, I we can we can start and say hey just, just tell us a little bit about how you got started and then we can kind of go because most of the people on this page here are either entrepreneurs or thinking about being like entrepreneurs um so and since you know you consult businesses you know um we love to get some tips and stuff that you've seen you know yeah. during whatever you've been doing as far as consulting and business so yeah can you start out but just give me a little you know intro about what you do and you know about how you got started yeah so um my name is yang yi lore and i am from wasa area i am a coach and consultant my business is faithful consulting and um, I've been in business for five years, so it's it's like a milestone <laughs> um, because this is when kind of, it gets like really really exciting. Because when you start off in your business, it's like you're hustling really hard to just like you know get momentum going, and then now yeah. it's kind of to a phase where there's some sustainability and growth, and so it's really exciting for me. Um, and what does it say? They say like uh, businesses usually die within the first one or two years, right? <laughs> yes. So five yes, years within pretty... the first year, a, um, a huge percentage. I can't remember if it's seventies in the seventies, eighties, but yeah, die within the first year, and then actually even after ten years, there's a huge percentage that businesses go out. Um, and there's many different reasons we can all kind of guess. Um, hmm. Maybe it's stagnation. Maybe it's just lack of creativity, um, poor planning, et cetera. But yeah, within the first year, it's it's not surprising to see a huge number of businesses go out. Um, so yeah, congrats to you. So uh, so how did you? I mean, how did you get started? I mean, so I really was kind of trying to put all of um, my degrees and interest and passion together. When I was in my PhD uh, graduate uh, class, uh, one of my course was um, consulting. And so part of that track is writing up this business plan and figuring out what I wanna do. And I had my business plan already created and everything during my course. And I kind of took it out because I was at a phase in my life where I was really unhappy in my nine to five. Uh, I was, <laughs> I won't go into too much detail, but, but it was, it was probably like a, a darkest part of my life of just really not knowing. Um, I thought I would be happy when I got there. Like I was a supervisor, I was, you know, steady job, everything, but I was so unhappy. And so I kind of just took this business plan out and said, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I just have to do it. And literally, I started with just a couple hundred dollars, just really just to file the paperwork, get it going. And then I was just hustling to get it through. Um, in the midst of that, I went through a separation and divorce as, as, as I was starting my business as well. And so let's talk about like rock bottom, rock bottom. That's like rock bottom, rock bottom. There ain't no other bottom. Yeah, to go just to. You toughed it out, you know, that's, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really kind of toughing it out through that that phase. I think like when you are there, you have nowhere else to go but up. And yeah. so it was really during that time that my business then started taking traction. And um, we'll talk about this a little bit later um, in one of your questions, but connection, like the, the connections that I have was able to help me be very successful in my business. So. Cool. Cool. So, so you went to school, right? What was your major that you were like? Yeah. Like you for? <laughs> so my bachelor's is in social work and I have a master's in counseling. And then um, I have an ABD in organizational psychology. Uh, so it's, it's, you, you can see it, it's so different yeah. but it's all around the science of people, the study of people. So organizational psychology is really the study of people in workplaces, people, yeah. behaviors, you know, in workplaces, systems in, in workplaces. Um, and but then, so how did that, how did that trigger you to do like 
I mean, consulting. I mean, was it like, I mean. I, I was so passionate uh, about leadership. I, okay. when I first got out of my um, undergrad, I went straight to work. I got, you know, I'm very fortunate and blessed that right away out of college, I was able to get a social work position, which is rare um, with no experience to, to get a county position. And so I was able to get in and I worked there and I re recognized really quickly that as I'm helping families, right, try to deal with their problems and yeah. taking care of families and doing good for the community, I was suffering as, as an employee because of the organizational culture uh, was very toxic. Uh, and I was in that culture for 10 years. And so that is where my love and passion of leadership came in. And I went to my master's and then just really researched and focused around leadership. What was that about? Um, so a big part of my business, Faithful Consulting, is leadership, leadership development, leadership coaching, leadership in development. It's training, it's um, consulting, um, all that stuff in there. Oh, so you bought in culture, right? Are you can you tell us a little bit about that? Is it like, is it the mom culture or are you talking about like? So organizational culture is just the culture of the company. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, so, and so if, if the culture of the company is toxic, <laughs> meaning like it's acceptable hierarchical type culture, like top down, this is the way we, we do business here. You listen to me and, and um, there's really no leadership. Uh, it's more this, I tell you, this is what you need to do and that's how you're going to do it. So, yeah. and also like a, a su like, like a subtle culture, everybody knows it, nobody calls it out, but it's, it's the culture is you can sense it when it's, it's not supportive of employees. It's, uh, you know, you don't focus on employee morale, your turnaround, like <laughs> I I was in county government, so the the turnaround um, was for an employee was six months, and I at six months was seniority <laughs> in, in one of my wow. so you could tell like yeah. the culture of an organization by just employees leaving and oh, okay there, and so there's m many ways to define the culture, but um, oh okay, so I never understand that I. I because I mean, you know, I went on your website you know, and you talked about culture. I was thinking like culture, like oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like you know, like Hmong is a culture, and you know, like you know, Asia, yeah. you know, Hispanics as a culture. But that's not what you meant. You're talking about like the culture, like what a business, mm -hmm. you know, how they treat. I guess what you yeah. treat or how mm -hmm. you know they mold yeah. their people. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know. Yes. So, so that is that what triggered you to go, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So when I established my business example um, of culture, uh, simply is when I established my business, I want it to be even my name. So even the name Faithful Consulting. So if you look at the definition of faithful, it's really complete work, uh, being very faithful, being very faithful to your customers, faithful to your mm. um, the people who you work with. Um, it's doing complete work. Uh, so that I'm already setting a culture yeah. and then my, my faithful and faith, faith is my daughter, my eight year old daughter's name. Yeah. And so you can see my family values in there. So that's, that's kind of how you set your culture is through your core values and what you believe in and, and how do you then embody? Because for me, um, you know, initially you are the, the, you, you are your brand, you are your brand. And so you you have to set that culture and my culture is of integrity honesty doing complete work quality work um so it's it's setting those kind of things up but it comes from core values the culture of an organization starts at your values what you believe in what you want the company to embody uh -huh. um, and represent so it's it's not only like embody represent but you kind of walk the walk talk the talk and so that's why you have the overarching culture and then the real like, you know, people who are in it that knows what the real culture is. So if that's like if that's a two different two different like messages, like the people who actually work in there are like, no way, this is toxic. Well, then 
that's not really the culture. When you're saying my culture of uh, organizational culture is, is full of integrity, but the people who actually work there say, well, not, not really. So that impacts the culture as well. So. Okay. So I, I mean, we are kind of getting into what you're doing, yeah. um, but I kind of want this show to be kind of like, mm -hmm. like beginner type, you know, because we got a lot of young people uh, <laughs> in the group. So like, uh, I'll start simple, right? Yeah. Because I think what we're talking about here is cultures, like how to keep your people, right? Or how to, how to mold them to be like a certain culture in your your business is that kind of what you were going at it yeah culture is like a brand right like your brand oh, yeah exactly your yeah yeah it's 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 a combination yeah. branding behaviors um who you kind, are mm -hmm. but that kind of falls into it but we want to keep it simple yeah. just basic yeah. today <laughs> and maybe we can expand on it another time but yeah. so let's just say i mean um so let me just do a quick intro today we had uh yang yi from wasa she's gonna you know, she's a business consultant. So we're just going to ask her some basic stuff. Like, you know, like my first question is, you know, mm -hmm. just for the, the younger guys that are looking to like, maybe look toward starting a business, like um, maybe you help them out. Right. So like, like, what do you see? Like, what's the most important thing when you start a business? Like what's the first thing you would do or you would advise somebody to start a business? Um, I say if you are interested in what you're doing, um, I would uh, you do a lean, lean canvas or do a, a business plan, uh, go there. There's so many different plant templates. So go online, search for lean business, uh, canvas. And mm -hmm. that's a very simple document that you can kind of fill out about your business idea to just plot it out. Uh, do research on your, your field, right? Uh, what are the opportunities here? What, you know, what do I even make? <laughs> you know, what does it even make? What are the risks? You know, kind of, kind of just start with some research. So let's say, like, let's make it simple, right? Yeah. I want to do a papaya salad because mm -hmm. I love papaya salad. I think yeah. I make the best papaya salad, right? Yeah. Like, how would you start? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Do you see, like, even there's a market, is there a market where you say, let's just, let me just go and grind it out? Or, you know, do you see people doing that? Or do you just like, hey, you know, you should research to see if it's worth it or or so? So I'll tell you the science way, the consulting way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll tell you the, like, like, you know, what the heck? And just go out and do it because that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, we want to know the science way because. The science way is, is, is really do a business plan, do a lean canvas, like, get, you know, get smart about it. Like, like do yeah. your research um, uh, in, in papaya, you know, what, what is already different papaya restaurants in the region? How am I going to set my, where are the gaps here that I see? Like do your market research. Uh, like you is, know, there, is, there, is there a place you can go for that? Or is it just, Doing you can stuff. use a lot of resources. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I'd say connect with your chambers, connect with uh, your economic development uh, resource centers, uh, connect with, um, you know, it's just important to connect with maybe local organizations that can help you um, support you uh, through your business planning, things like that. So I'd say chambers, um, economic development um, centers, get involved in them. Um, SBA, small business, um, is it administration or association? One of those. Um, yeah, small yeah. business administration, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the first thing you're saying. I mean, you're kind of going to like, hey, you know, connect. You're, you're basically just saying connect with people, right? Yeah. And just say, hey, you know, what do you think? Is that kind of what you're saying? Are you kind of getting, because there, is there really, is there, is, is there companies out there that actually does like particular surveys like this or are you, are you just kind of, I mean, do you see this kind of stuff or is it? I do. I mean, I, I help coach and strategize. So yeah. that's a big part of what I do is I'm a strategist. Um, so I help strategize and help people kind of grasp. Okay. Concepts and take them through a lean canvas business plan. Okay. Really look at their their idea to see if it's uh, uh 
if it's a business <laughs> or is it going to be a hobby, right? Yeah. <laughs> are you going to make money or are you going to have fun? And it's okay to just have fun. That's okay if, if that's what you want. Um, but, you know, in order for it to be a business, you have to make money. So. Gotcha. So don't you guys just join in. Hey, if you guys got any questions about how to start, you know, kind of like a business, like how to strategize a business and stuff or, you know, um, if you got any questions, comment down. I got a few questions here, uh, which is cool. Uh, let me know where you guys are from, too. So we'd like to know if there's any Wisconsin folks, because this Yang Yi is from Wisconsin. Uh, was, represent Wisconsin, you know. <laughs> I got some Minnesota and some Laos people here that are probably <laughs> overcoming some of you guys. So I don't know. There's more Laos people than in Wisconsin, I think, right now. So if you're in Wisconsin, give us a shout-out. We'll give you a shout-out, too. All right. So let's just say... I'm gonna grind it out, right? I I think I make the best papaya salad. I want to go ahead and uh, just grind it out, right? So then, how would you help somebody strategize for it? Like, you got any tools for that, or like? Yeah, we we would coach around. How do you set? How, how do you set your business apart? So you know, here's a perfect example. You'll go into um. Um, Jatalamo, right? Um, you'll go into a flea, not, not flea market, <laughs> basically. Flea market? Yeah, yeah the stores. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually when it tastes the best, is go to flea <laughs> market, it, you know? Hometown, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you see all the stores, they look alike. They all have the same product. So it's just, n there's nothing that sets them apart. It's like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Where am I going to go? <laughs> right. Um, and so, um, you know, on a good day and people walk and maybe la la la, okay, so they shop in your shop, right? There's, it's just, a, it's, there's no real metrics. There's no real, there's no real uh, determination factor that I'm going to make X, Y, and Z. It's more like, did I, did someone stop there? Because everything yeah. looks the same. I can get that. I can get that papaya at that store, at that store, at that store. And it's all papaya and it's all the same. So look at where, what can I do to make myself stand out? And it doesn't have to be grand. It could be, oh, I displayed this beautiful jewelry on a mannequin and the mannequin is so sexy or whatever, right? It's, it's, it's how do you make your shop unique, leverage the opportunities that maybe other shops are not gonna, don't have. Yeah. So it's like, look at the gaps. Basically look at the gap and look at a problem that you can solve, um, whether it's service, are you solving a problem for someone? Do someone want to take your pill, you know, <laughs> take your pill to get skinny? They want some papaya. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I know what you're saying, right? So let's say we go to, like, the tournament, right? Yeah. So there's tons of, <laughs> yeah. of, of like, shops, like, <clears throat> and then they all sell moan sausage, and they all sell papaya <laughs> salad, yeah. right? So it's like, you're saying... <laughs> All right, so you gotta you gotta grab their attention somehow. So you're saying yeah. do something like a mannequin with jewelry or something like that. But you know, I mean, I mean, I know this be. is hard, right? Because you you have to really sit down and say, okay, you know, what else is some what people are? Doing? I mean, what else can I do to get some sort of attention? So I mean, basically, you're saying just you gotta find a way to get their attention because everybody is the normal at this point, right? Yeah, to so be that's different. Kind of like, first thing, yeah. right? So yeah. what else would you look at? I mean, that's, that's awesome. I mean, cause I mean, there's, you're right. Cause when I go to those tournaments, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, even like I go to Moan village up in Minnesota, they that's all sell the same or Moan town, whatever. They yeah. all sell the same thing, you know, and I mean, even Milwaukee, you know, it's like, you know, these, they sell, you know, pretty much the same stuff, pretty much similar to it. So how do you get the attention? So so basically, you're saying things, even as display, like I go into one shop and this is the best way to do research. You, you go in and research it yourself. I mean, I walk through and I do. Uh, uh, so I always assess. So as, as, as my company as a consultant, I always assess where where business is. So where are you in your business? So I'll go, for example, if someone from a shop hires me, I'll go in pretend I'm a customer and go in and assess the situation, right? How does it coming from a customer's standpoint? Gotcha. How, how is this business from a customer standpoint? So I will be the customer going in. How am I being treated? You know, a lot of, um, <laughs> Hmong restaurants, this <laughs> you 
<laughs> right? You know, you want to do lot um you 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 know should show then they get your mood so right. So it's it's like I would do that. I would do an, an analysis of going into their shop, kind of be the customer, give them the data for that and then I will also be the employee. Uh, coming from that lens as an employee how are things efficiently run so so that's where we find gaps in that can set your business apart is what can make you stand out and it could be the simplest thing is you know a restaurant being customer friendly <laughs> and you can get so many more customers coming back just not necessarily for your food they come back because it feels like home and that that could be the selling factor for your business that keeps you alive for the next 10 years. Exactly. I I know what you mean by that. Um and you know we were in Thailand like um in November and you know Thailand has just like rows and rows of shops just kind of like we go to to the tournaments, right? And you just go there and they're just like little small shops right next to each other and they're just, you know, and and they just sit there, right? So the the Thai people, they just sit there, and all they do is, you know, they wait for you to, to if you're interested, they'll come look. You you come look and stuff like that. And but there's no interaction. But then we also went to like the Hmong village up in Thailand, right? <clears throat> the Hmong Thai people, mm -hmm. and and when you go there, they're hustling. And I was telling my wife this. I'm like, you can see the difference in hustle. Because and I, I, that's why I told her like most people hustle better, because <clears throat> when we went there they go they'll go like uh, nipple watching that you are you know so they're actually engaging you know and then now you feel like oh man maybe I do need to buy something because you know, <laughs> now you feel guilty because they're actually talking to you right yes. so but so it's a there's a connection there you know that I mean even it's like a bump you know they're bump, bumping you. you know, or they go like, uh, like you, like you go to like a home village, and they go, uh, you know, and you to the food court, and they go, uh, five bay you actually know, right, stuff like that, right? It's like, oh man, you feel guilty if you walk away, right? So then you're like, oh, okay, let me go look at it. Okay, all right, I'll buy something like that. But you know, when I went to Thailand, it wasn't like that. It was just food, and then you know, if you, you look around and if you if you you want something, you go, hey, you know, you get you try to get their attention to come and say, hey, I want this. But Mumbong people, you know, when I was in Thailand or even over here in, in the U.S., they're like that. You know, they have that hustle. That's why I say most people hustle better than you know by um, most of the Asians I've seen. So from what you're saying is that's that's another that's another tactic, right? It's, well, it's, and it's your that. vision too. I mean, what is your vision? Is it, a, do you want a long-term business or do you want, oh, absolutely. are you just, are you looking at like, right? <laughs> I'm going to make it through one more day, right? So if your vision is long-term, you want to do what's most beneficial to you long-term, which is right. Focusing on your customer service, focusing on your services, your products, your, you know, those kind of things uh, versus, you know, I mean, if you don't really care and, and yeah, you know, it just, it just, it just goes to your business's progress and you kind of just have to think about that. So, okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to get tips, right? So, 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 so like, so your first, so if, um, your first thing is, so guys, you guys just joining us, we're, we're talking to Yang Yi from Wasso. She's a business consultant. She's giving some tips on how to, to take your business to the next level. Um, it's kind of like a basic course right now, but uh, right now we're talking about like if I had a papaya salad, but you can ch you can take this and make it any sort of other business, but we're talking about how to make a, a just a papaya salad. Give us some tips, right? So the first tip she gave was, you know, you know, get attention. Find some way to get attention, right? Second tip is... Of unique, yeah. Yeah, be unique. Don't be like the other guy, right? <laughs> And then, why the, should I buy papaya from you versus yeah. your next door neighbor? <laughs> yeah, and the, the second thing is, you know, you know, engage, right? Engage with, you know, the people coming by, because then, you know, to me, I think that it makes me feel bad. I would have to buy from that person. <laughs> and then the, uh, and the key, key just mentioned, you know, hire a sexy girl to make a pot <laughs> salad. What do you think of the idea? I think, do you see that? I mean, I hear that sex appeal attracts more is that is that true coming from like you know what, what do you see about that what do you feel about that i i think 
I, I think it, it has to be your personality, right? Come back to, um, come back to, is this me, right? I mean, it's not me, but it could be you, right? Like meaning like, uh, what, what are your culture, right? <laughs> Going back to the culture I mentioned, yeah. like what, what is it that you want to, to, to be known as that's part of your brand. So do you want to be known? So it's going to be part of your brand. <laughs> do you want to be the brand of a paya that's a, that has a sexy, well, maybe you are, you know? And okay. So for me, <laughs> I want to make as much money as I can. So I, you know, you, would that bring in the, the sales? I think, you know, it's unique, right? It's unique, yeah. and um, you will definitely get a lot of guys. Um, but <laughs> is that your customer base, right? Do guys buy a yeah. lot of papaya, or do women do buy more papaya? And ah, are you, it. you know, right? Are you, you know, so weigh those that, pros and cons. I mean, if that you is have a valid person, point, yeah. right? So, so does the does the girls buy more papaya, or does the dudes <laughs> buy more papaya, right? And I kind of think that. You know, my wife's the only one that goes – when we go out to the tournaments, my wife's the only one that goes out and buy the papaya. Mm -hmm. So that might not affect what she does. So you're right. You got a point there. So – but as you, we were like, dude, you know? I like seeing sexy girls maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I should try it. I should do it. You can, can try it, and you guys can try it. You guys can let us know. <laughs> I should, we should try this as an experiment. <laughs> We just try this experiment to see how this is going to work out, guys. Any guys want to partner with me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, there was a question here. Uh, let's see here. Um, do you... that was down. Okay, so that uh, so Archie says, you know, do you so what do you recommend for a shop to stand out if everyone makes that? Okay, again, I think we kind of talked about that. Uh, hey, Dua, uh, awesome, nice meeting you both. Um, you can, and then Archie, can you can't sell piece of hamburgers at home, home places in a way more, okay? Um, guys, you got any questions? Um, comment them down, which is going down the list so we don't lose track. Uh, do we have rest? So Archie goes, uh, Yang Yi, do you believe that prices plays a big role as well? Whoever, if if it's cheaper in price, yeah, so. What do you mean? Do um, you see that as price? Does that play a big role in you know trying to get people to, to come your way? Uh, not necessarily. Um, not necessarily. It 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 does and it doesn't. Um, so there's a lot of factors. If you are a quality service, or if you stand out, if you make yourself really unique. Uh, <clears throat> People are going to come to you. Sometimes quality outbeats quantity, right? Um, meaning sometimes we're going to splurge on those Nikes, right? We're going to splurge on those Nikes because guess what? It's They're expensive versus one at Target, right? Um, it's because... It's built a reputation. It's so, and it's built a quality product. And so sometimes quality wins. I would consider pricing. What I would say about pricing is that you want to make sure that your pricing market is in line with your market research. Meaning for myself as a consultant, I cannot, I should not charge, not that I can't when I, when I get there, but I should charge within the realm of what other consultants charge. Uh, but because I do have a, a, an advantage of being Hmong and being, um, have these other advantages, uh, I can charge a little bit more. So I look at my margins and see what sets me apart. Like there is not many yeah. <laughs> long consultants that do what I do. And so I can charge more for my service versus maybe uh, my colleagues that are Mikapi Yana, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so pricing matters and it doesn't matter. And the reason is if you are able to create quality product, or service, it can outbeat your competitors regardless. So make sure that it's like an all, all ingredient, customer service, it's it's quality, it's 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 all those factors. But don't charge so high that people are just like, I think I went to um, a website once and there was like a pin and it was from a brand name, I can't remember, like a, a paper clip that was for $5,000. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> right? I mean, it's right. like, come on, like, right? You know? <laughs> the value on that, <laughs> just which, <laughs> which I agree because I do vacation rentals, and you know, you know, I like I, if I were to go and search for like a place to stay, mm -hmm. I would filter by prices first just to get an idea. But ultimately, if I go down a list, you know, it's kind of, does it, is it more valuable, you know, to stay in that than maybe a few bucks more to a, you know, it just something that looks better than, you know, so I agree with you there. Um, yeah. Price means something, but it kind of doesn't because yeah. you, you, some people, I mean, I look at value too, like, yeah. you know, for me to stay in like a place and it has better beds and stuff, I mean that's that's more valuable for me. I'll look at price, but you know it's it's what what I get out of it, you know that I'll pay more. So totally agree with you there. There you go, Key. Um, so yeah, so guys, let me know where you guys are from. You know, just another, just want to see, you know, we're just want to see where everybody's from. So we got a Wisconsin speaker here. So, um, but so but as a business consultant. Like, what do you see that affects business the most, right? Yeah. Um, I think it, it depends. Um, um, a, a lot of it is, is, to me, is foundational work. When I work with a lot of organizations is the foundational type work has not been set, processes, procedures, um, like you're so busy running a business, right? You go in, like even for myself, and I do this for other companies, but I'm so busy hustling and working for other companies. I have to, sometimes I come back to my own company and say, this is what I do for other companies. And I'm forgetting to do some of these foundational work for my own company. And so foundational work is really, um, it comes back to the vision, mission, strate your strategic plan. Where do you see yourself? How are you m measuring up to your goals? Are you hitting your goals? Are you, are you in line? Um, do you have some processes in place for complaints and things like that? So it's, it's foundational work. Did you design your relationship with your, your customers, with your, um, mm -hmm. the people you work with? So yeah, I, I would say that, sometimes for for businesses is they don't have some of those processes and procedures in place uh, bookkeeping is such a simple thing for like some of the Hmong uh, uh, businesses that sometimes is like it just it's not up to par there's no real bookkeeping there's no forecasting financial forecasting of their business to say where do i really want to be what is my goal for this like what would i like to be at what's that financial outlook like numbers kind of scare uh, <laughs> I think scares some businesses, especially I think in our culture. Yeah. And so it's taking a realistic look to say, I want to hit this goal. How do I do that? Um, and having those kind of processes. It, I, I want to last 10 years. What does that forecast look like for me? Um, and if I want to grow progressively 5% every year, what does that look like? Um, so some of those... Um, Totally, I totally agree. Yeah. It's like, yeah. like I run a business. I don't keep booking at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any procedures. My my cleaners do complain. Like, hey, you know, I need something to go off on. I don't do any of that. I'm more of a, yeah, dude. Let's make more money, more money, more money, money. But does it? Does that really like? Do people? I mean, as a consultant, do do they really come to you and say, Hey, do we, do we need this? I mean, or you're just saying, Hey, you need this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what I see is that when we don't align and don't set some of those foundational stuff up, like for example, a nonprofit Hmong organization, I'm just giving an example. I'm, I don't want to bash our Hmong community. <laughs> it's not about bashing, but there's just an example that I see, um, is like, uh, when they asked me to go in and they haven't done a strategic plan for 20 years <laughs> and this happens in Mika organizations too. So, um, but it's rare because they actually put that in, but their budget line to say, cause if you don't, if you don't know where you're headed, right. You don't know where you're going. Uh, yeah. You're going to miss that every single time. You're not, you're going to look 10 years later and, and be at a position and say, 
where was I supposed to be going? Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we using this funding for? Did we do that? Did we use the funding? And I think some of our Hmong organizations, right? Uh, part of it is why sometimes we have little funding yeah. available to us is because we don't have those um, set up. Right. Uh, not that we're not doing it, but we don't have a system set up. You know, I'm yeah. not saying that they're not doing it. They they're taking the money and doing the work, but they don't have the data, the metrics. How, they they don't know how to measure. So yeah, um, the measure that they did what they're they they're supposed to do with the money that they got from the government, for example. So I think what sets what really affects businesses is making sure that you have clarity in your goals clarity in your vision, mission, and, and your goals and your strategies and how are you going to get there and uh, monitoring that. Am I getting there? Like, what what is my goal? And it, so you're not living day to day in your business, but you're actually hitting something, hitting markers in your business. Totally agree. <laughs> totally understand where you're coming from because you just kind of open it up. So like if you're saying that, so my books, if, if I was to give my cleaner a certain outline of what to do, so when they come into the room or into the house, they go, okay, they check this off the list. Okay, I can clean this, clean this, clean this. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of get a gauge of how long it takes them to clean this particular house, you know? And if if you're right, if if it takes too long, we can take this off the list and say, hey, now we can gauge how long it's going to take you. So I see where you're coming from. Uh, man, I need to start up, start <laughs> my books. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right that's another way of taking your business to the next level right because you have it written down and you you can kind of like like in the in my vacation business vacation rental business um it's about time right so people come it's kind of like hotel right you come in you check in and then you check out but then the next person checking in it's like oh you know you only have a few hours <clears throat> to get that done before the next person checks in so if you, if you have that list, you can kind of gauge how long it takes. So totally get what you mean, you know, process, process procedures. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah. Your and you know where to cut too, done. like, like what you were saying, you know, that if you're taking too long somewhere, then you need, how do I find a more efficient way to do this? How do I, how do I, um, mm. maybe like Absolutely. for myself, right? Yeah. How do I deviate? <clears throat> okay. Could I be making four hundred dollars an hour, or, or right? Should I be making four hundred dollars an hour doing my consulting work, or do I want to do this peddly little bookkeeping where I could right? I could filter that out to a clerical, uh, an employee to do, and I focus on making four hundred dollars. So, so that's the cost analysis, the 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 logic, right? And thinking is. You know, how do you want to use your time too? But as you look at all those pictures, you can decide, okay, I'd rather make 400 and pay someone $15 to do that. And and so, yeah. Awesome. I get it. So you're, you're basically saying you identify if it's worth your time mm -hmm. to do these certain things. Yeah. So relate, just to, for example, to relate, like, like I'm, I'm taking her stuff that guy, I'm taking her stuff and I'm kind of relating to my business, right? Mm -hmm. So, so laundry is pretty much the longest thing that it takes to wash sheets and towels and stuff like that. So what she's saying is you got to identify. So you got your process procedures, procedures down. So if it's, you know, if it's, if it's taking you longer because you want certain things done, maybe you don't need to do laundry. Have them do laundry because we have my, we have them do laundry at the house. Maybe we need to just contract it out. Right. So that'll save us some time and then they can just focus on this and then I can, I can turn, I can make my turnover faster. So awesome. Great idea. Awesome. <laughs> Boom. It's going to take me to the next level. So <laughs> got any questions? Uh, Monta says, does location matters? Do you, does that, I mean, do you see that in your, I mean, in business, in, in real estate, it does matter. I'm assuming it matters in, you know, yeah. you see that yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, so all those factors do matter. It depends on your business, your industry. What are you trying to do? Location does matter. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way or best strategy to help change Hmong spending habits to spend more? <laughs> 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 what's up, Archie? 
<laughs> that's it's funny but it's I mean, it's valid like uh, okay you know I, I guess i don't know man you gotta grab their attention some more right it's all about trying to get their intention you know to spend money <laughs> you know um i, I think it, it has to be compelling because i know like people will spend thousands of dollars for um I hope home, right they will spend thousands of dollars for a spiritual healer right <laughs> and so it's like is it compelling to them so is the product is your product and services how can you make it compelling to them that this is my magic pill, pill to to cure your whatever symptoms um and if it is uh, something along that lines i think that you people will buy people will buy if it if it solves a pain point for them yeah so yeah i mean that's you're right it's all about solving their problems right mm -hmm. in business <laughs> yes. you mentioned that right yes you can solve their problem by i don't know whatever yeah. you know then don't they'll throw money at you so mm -hmm. um two goes what do you see is the big issues that needs to be corrected on our home businesses do you I mean, I know you work with Mika businesses too, but I mean, what in general, I guess, you know, what do you see, you know, he's saying in a home in businesses. So yeah. do you see any of that? So we talked about like foundational stuff, right? In businesses, bookkeeping okay. systems, have systems, processes, procedures in places. Um, I would also say budget in, budget in like coaching, consulting, things every business should budget in internal external um consulting coaching um if you're just a small business budget in external consulting or coaches because so my slang logan is um everybody st struggles with stagnation right that's my business is all about helping you solve that stagnation whether it's business life whatever we get to a point where we get stuck all of us, all of us in our business. And so you need that person to push you to that next level. And that's what Chai and I are talking about today. And, and so it's, it's getting that lens and you need to have someone to objectively not be passionate about your business because you're passionate about your business. You're in your business. And so you're in the everyday today things and you don't see it from a broader scope. Whereas a coach and consultant like me, I have no investment in that the the only investment I have in you is that you grow that next level. Yeah. And so I will tell you the 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 <laughs> the critical things that you might not want to hear. <laughs> but I will tell you that because it will take you to that next level. Yeah. Um, and so it, you need to invest. I think that we in Hmong businesses, we sometimes forget because we're running, we're operating in day to day and Bain and Chai Jungoli um, have other people come and learn about our business or have other people come and, um, and at first it's cost, right? They just have to say, to um, itu tining, um, te itu consultant or coach la, la tau pe lu, uh, you know, business. They just said, te niena, because it is expensive. It is expensive. But it, you know, you, you pay five, whatever, however many grand, but if you can grow, um, you know, I, I look at one of my, uh, coaches business, for example, she grew 60%, oh. made over six digits from where she was in wow. her business when she started to where she hired me to work with her and she grew 60%. And, and you pay 5,000 for that 60% growth. You made over six digits. It's what are you willing to risk, right? So, <laughs> I mean, oh. you gotta like you gotta think outside of like, oh, oh. Like, yeah. You know, but if if you gave five thousand, it's just investment. If you gave, if you invested in your business five thousand, and you were able to get sixty thousand, would you invest? You know, so you just have to, yeah, yeah, you just have to. I think Hmong businesses. You, any business, I don't care among whatever business you have, you have to consider that at some point you're going to get stuck in your growth. You need that person to help you get to that other level. See from a different lens. Look at your operations from a very objective view and assess it and say, here's problems that you can fix. 
here's how you can be more efficient, like child, your, your real estate stuff. Here's how you can be more efficient so that you can actually have a quicker turnaround. People can get in quicker. People are happier. The happier customers you got, the more they're returning, et cetera, you know? Um, and so I would say if, if my advice on that would be put a budget aside to, to bring in someone to look at your business yeah. objectively. That's kind of what Sai was saying. From uh, I don't know if you can see his comment right there. He goes, I did everything, have no annual budgets, no forecast. Only thing I kept track of is my profit and loss, which is kind of what my mentality as well. You know, I was just, my focus is just, you know, make as much money as I can. But um, but you're saying is that, yeah, we can do that, but we're going to get to a certain level, right? Where we're, you know, we can't, get to the next level so do you want to work smarter or do you want to work harder exactly so you're <laughs> so, saying I mean, you got to kind of ask yourself that right um there is a more efficient way to to do everything and yes i think um if there's nothing wrong with looking at your profit and your losses and tracking those i mean yeah. that's good but i think you have to see what within my systems can I also improve? Because should you be wasting your time? You go out, just shy. Go be chotuwasana, right? <laughs> Every day, and um, you're not taking a look at that. But you, all you care about is the profit and loss. Your health is deteriorating. How is that going to benefit you? This money, right? <laughs> this money ain't going to benefit you in the long term. Well, if you can, you, you can. Home. You you can increase his profit. So Sai, there you go, Sai. You can say she can increase your profit sixty <laughs> percent yeah, just it, by it, looking at your process, right? So like it, like you're right. With mine, it's like, dude, it, you just explained it. I can be more efficient, you know, if I came with some sort of policy or process and procedures, and we can kind of narrow down the time frame, dude. That makes it totally easy, and then I can I know what to look at, you know. Like I, there's a benchmark, like what you're saying, you know, so if it take things away, you know, it gives me a different result. If, if I add something, you know, so give me a different another thing it comes down to is I think Chai and I think everybody, we work hard so we can have freedoms, right? Are, are you really having the freedoms if you're working 24 seven, right? To, to just get this profit, right? So we work hard so we can have freedom of choice that's freedom to be with our family freedom to vacation freedom to whatever it is we work hard um because it's not for yet, right so we can create the freedom the freedom is what we're looking for right it's not yet, right yeah um and so are you really getting to that freedom or are you stuck at the <laughs> are you jumping over that to the freedom <laughs> absolutely yeah. So let's just get to the bottom of like, how much does it cost? I mean, what, what are your services? Like, what do you? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it really depends. Um, I, so for, for coaching, I have my coaching rates. Um, it's two fifty an hour for my coaching rates, uh, business life, leadership, all that is, is two fifty an hour. And then, um, strategic planning is on top of that, but uh -huh. as part of my coaching rate, it's a discounted but I do a lot of strategic planning for organizations in general, and it runs from uh, two day, uh, you know, so five to 10 grand, five, five nonprofit. So I have a nonprofit rate and a for profit rate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I work on projects. So a lot of times, for example, my work with the state, I work, uh, I have a contract with the state. And so they'll, they'll contract with me and I'll work on a project with them. And usually those projects just ranges from 20 um, K to more, right. To, to whatever. And I deliver uh, a service within that time. So that could be, I'm assessing programs. I'm taking it through project management. So there's different phases and every phase is like a set budget amount that I get. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so consulting, I have different organizations I consult with. Yeah. Um, I do assessments, and we, we didn't get to that, but I do assessments in general. Wherever yeah. I start with any business, anything, I do assessments. Um, but I also do leadership assessment. So when you're talking about personal growth, um, the DISC and the Hogan um, was on your list here. I do those two. Awesome. And I, I do it for selection. So I have many different companies, and I'm all over the place, but... 
the rates kind of vary depending on what your needs are. But yeah, that's kind of a. Well, let's give your website yeah. out. Shout yeah. out a little bit. It's what Faithful Consulting. Yeah, yeah faithfulconsulting.com. Okay, and then she that in there it, it lists your services on there. Yeah, and you've been doing this for five years, so you you got you know, obviously you've been successful at it. So, uh, congrats to you on that. So, yeah. I know people were asking, uh, what, you know, what are you charging and stuff like that. So, we'll get that out of the way, so then they don't they just don't go, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, so they can go move on and ask those questions on how to <laughs> yeah. take a, le a business to the next level. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, so let's talk about like, uh, I, I know we'll come up on the next hour. So we got a few minutes, right? You got a few more minutes, right? Um, uh, guys, let, let us know. You got any questions? I mean, how to take your business to the next level. I mean, I, I already taking a few good tips already. That's awesome. I'm getting this for free. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get it for free right now right and not pay five to ten thousand all right so <laughs> so great so let, we have a papaya salad company we're, we're hustling i'm doing all this kind of stuff um let's see um i'm bookkeeping i you know i create some processes and procedures let's see what's the next question um, you, I mean, it, it kind of goes, I mean, the next question I think was, you know, I think you mentioned you have some assessments on there, right? I think that was important too. Uh, you talk about like the Hogan assessments. I, I just learned about that. Mm -hmm. And the other one was disc or so. Yeah. Can you talk a little about that? I, I, I had to look it up on your website and I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. So, uh, if you do that, just explain a little bit about it. Yeah, so the DISC and Hogan are um, developmental tools that we use quite a bit for leaders just to assess where they're at. Um, it's, it's also used for selection. So if, for example, you probably interviewed in, in a, for a job and they made you take an assessment, um, I interpret those assessments. <laughs> and so they, 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 there's different tools, Myers-Briggs, there's um, EQ, whatever. There's so many different assessments. But I interpret those assessments and I'll say, this person is blah, 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 based on their data. And I'll send it back to the company and the company can then make their determination based off of my assessment on your interview, on your resume. Uh, so they will take a look at all the overall holistic package of you mm -hmm. in the interview and they'll say, okay, will we give this posi position to this person? Yeah, um, but I'm one component of of that is I do the assessment uh, to say, do you have the right personality, skills, etc., to be in that leadership position? So yeah, please, because that kind of brings me up because some don't like kind of like trick questions, right? Mm -hmm. An assessment question. So okay. like, I'll give you an example, like. Like if you were working and something, I mean, it goes to something to this nature. Like you're working and one of your fellow employees stole, would you tell on your whatever <laughs> or something like that? It, it was something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, like one of your best employee or something like that or something like that. Like it, it kind of tests, does it kind of tests your, like your trust or I yeah, guess so I'm looking at it. How do you deter interpret that? Is it, is that a bad thing where... <laughs> Yeah, I would say it, it depends. Um, I'd say answer it like to the truthful, like you really can't get around some of these things, some of these questions, right? The the best and most truthful as you can. And what it, what I do interpret is is the result. So it's, it's then condensed into whatever you answer. I don't get to see your individual answers, but it, it condenses your answers into certain categories. And then I see those categories and based off of those categories, I'll say, and I'll say 99.9% .9 of the time, these assessments are right on to your personalities. And uh, I don't know if, if some of my um, folks are, are online, but whenever I do any of those assessments for them, they are like, yep, that's me. <laughs> so you really can't get away with, with like, um, um, saying that it's not me and it's it, the assessments isn't saying that oh 
you know, we're going to, it's like a slap on the hand. It's not that it's just mm -hmm. like, right. If you are um, in a work environment where it's changing, you need someone that is quick on their feet and that is, is quick to think and quick to adapt and quick to like make decisions and et cetera. That's the best person to be in that role. Not someone that is very laid, like almost too laid back, very introverted, very right. So, so, so although you might think, I don't, I, what if I don't have the, um, you know, skills or what if my personality doesn't match? Well, if you, it depends on what, what you're applying for, right? We want, what we do for those companies is find the right people to be in that position. And so what we do is in, interpret, what I do is interpret those data for them to say, is this person based on their personality going to fit into the environment and the position and role that this, um, yeah. The, you know, so you're saying there's really no right or wrong you know, way. Right or wrong, it's because yeah. because they're going to have their own yeah. em employee or the the company's going to have their own kind of standards, right? And then they're going to relate that to your your assessment answers, right? So, yeah, so the company's going to take a look at the interview. Sometimes I do the interviews. Um, sometimes I don't. It depends on what they yeah. contract me to do. Um, and what they're willing to contract out to do. But sometimes they do the interview. Sometimes I do the interview and then I collect the data. Um, but yeah, it's, it's based on a 360. So everything, it's your interview. How did you interview? Did you interview confidently? Did you interview well to what does your assessment say about your personality? And, and most of you, if you've been in a professional career, you've probably done some of these assessments. And, yeah, and may, yeah. And, that's like one of the questions that I'm like stuck on. I'm like, oh, man, how do I answer this? You know, my <laughs> my best friend stole, but I don't want to get my friends in trouble. It's like, how do you answer that? But you're saying there's really no right or wrong because you're it depends on what the employer is looking at. Arrest you because you have that. It, it, it just tells you like your degree of risk, right? Yeah. Your degree of risk um, like, for the company. And. But some of that you need to be able to um, take risks, right? Some leaders need to be have the ability to take risks. So if your degree of risk, it can be good or bad, right? Um, maybe that question compiles up to be that, yeah, you are a risk taker. But in a position where you're in leadership, you need some risk taking qualities, right? Yeah. So it 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 fits. So right. you don't want to not answer correctly <laughs> because yeah. you could lose a leadership position that wants to know if you do take risks. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So that was part of like, so we're, we're kind of talking about is kind of like, cause I had to look it up. It's kind of like the, is that part of the Hogan assessments? Yeah. Hogan, they're all assessment. Hogan disc, you probably taken a Myers-Briggs. Oh, okay. Um, they, they do colors, they do, yeah. they do uh, all sorts of assessments now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so so ex explain mm -hmm. that. So th those assessments are kind of like, it tells you what type of person, I had to look it up earlier. It tells you what kind of person you are, how, you know, and then from there you can take that person and see what they're, so if they're more efficient and like if they're more sh social, right, you can take that person and maybe make them more like, like a salesperson role yeah. than like a person so yeah i mean is that how mm -hmm. it's out yeah explain that because that's really important because what if you're using the strength of this person and doing something else that doesn't help the business yeah. so explain that because that, that's how i interpret it yeah yeah so assessments can be used for development so maybe you have people in your company <clears throat> and you want to know where they are and where do you place them so that you can strengthen your company right you, you you can be stronger you place them where they their strengths are going to be and so that's one use of how assessments are um when we take a look at someone's assessment if they're outgoing and they are uh right they love people you want them to be your sales people right yeah um and then there's assessment for selection right there's there's assessment then for selection to say objectively do i think this person is a good fit for a position so that's different. Like that's looking from a different lens than looking from a developmental lens of, yeah, with this, where would this, per, where can I put this leader? Where, where can I put this employee in my organization to, to allow me to best use this person's strengths to help me develop my company? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. No, I'm reading, I'm reading Sai's comment. He goes, I had this lady who interviewed 
great and end up sucking. And then he goes, then this lady who barely graduated from high school ended up running a multi-million dollar company. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know if he's interpreting that as, I was laughing because I kind of read it uh, at the corner of my eye. He goes, I don't know if, that's at, if there was an assessment involved or anything like that, but um, yeah. Uh, sorry if I asked question on this. Yeah, topic. that's why you can't rely on interview only. So going back to size point, you can't just rely, I've, I've hired employees that interview very well and was was not good right was not good um, yeah and that's why i think it's important to to have many components and that's why they do now if, if you ever interview now everything is almost like electronically now yeah <laughs> and they look at your facial you you only interview you don't even interview in front of people anymore <laughs> you interview with a computer you're taking you tests with yourself yeah you're taking like, oh tests. yes yes <laughs> So, yeah, so don't be camera shy now. Yeah. <laughs> right? There's so, all sorts of interview tools now that people are playing with in, in hum human resources. So, Gotcha. Oh, man, what was one thing I was, I was going to ask you? Um, anyway, let's move on if I remember yeah. it. Um, awesome. So, um, I mean... Let's move. Let's move away from that. So yeah, I got great stuff. Uh, if you guys, oh, I saw on your website you're hiring. Yeah. <laughs> so she is hiring, guys. You guys need a job. She needs a virtual assistant. <laughs> yeah, the the application is is is. Um, I mean, it's ongoing, but I I I cut the application off. So yeah, we're in the process of um the hiring phase right now. So okay, so yeah, we got a couple something. people. Yeah. Are you something, or are you looking? Huh? Or, so you are looking for? I I am. Um, okay. There's there's a few people in line to be interviewed right now. Oh, okay, so that's kind of what I saw. So I thought that, <laughs> cool. and it's gonna be tough because you're doing all of this, so it's gonna be like it's even more scarier. <laughs> yeah. So all right, so let's move on. <laughs> so I got people are all scared to like <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to take this assessment. Oh man, how am I gonna answer this? You know, so <laughs> ooh, I don't know. <laughs> So that's great. I got plenty, plenty of stuff. Um, love it. Appreciate it. Uh, I, w I did see that you did this one event with yeah. the Wisconsin Home Chamber of Commerce. That I mean, this is one thing I do believe in is networking. Yeah. Um, can you tell us? I mean, I think you did this seminar or just training back in what 2017 or something like that. Yeah, several years ago. Yeah. Um, can you give us a few takeaway from that? Because I believe totally in networking. I believe you know everybody should go out. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're in business, you should go out. You should always be out networking, talking to people. Uh, you can't get anywhere behind a computer. Uh, I know, you know, I'm behind Facebook, but you know, and I network with people on Facebook, but it's not the same when you, you know, it's yeah, you create connection, but it's not the same when you meet people in front of people. Um, because you create a better connection when you go out and meet with people. You go out to the dinner, you go out, you, you take them out, stuff like that. Uh, you go out to their wedding, you go out to their concert, I mean, concerts and stuff like mall concerts and stuff, and you just see them. You know, all, all that is really more better than just kind of talking to them on Facebook, you know. So, can you give us a few takeaways on that? Because I really, I mean, yeah. love to hear about it. Yeah. So, I think it's just a different way of looking at networking as, as um, it, more I, I, I look at networking as building a relationship. And so you should really be building relationships, authentic relationships with people that come into contact. And just remember the, the saying is so true. It's not what you know, it is who you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it still rings true. Um, what you know comes after who you know. <laughs> so if if you know the right people, and uh, I, I don't know if you said this at the beginning or what, but um, it's, or maybe I read it on a post of yours, but it's, if you surround yourself with, right, hustlers, you're going to be a, you are that next fifth hustler, <laughs> right? You, um, yeah. So, it's so important. Networking is so important. I, I, I would not be here where I'm at if there was n n the, the people, my people did not believe in me, right? The people that um, hire me did not believe in me. They were not friends of mine. I did not establish those connections. These are repeat 
customers of mine. I, I have a company that I've been working with for um, three, four years now, you know, and mm -hmm. continuously when projects come up, they think of me. And so it's so important that you build authentic, real relationships with people. It's not, it's, and, and don't think of this. Here's the takeaway. Don't think about what, what am I going to get from this person? It's not like this, this, the scheming, right? It's not a scheming. Yeah. Networking is not like a scheming. It's, it's, is this person a person that I want to get to know? So are, are their values in alignment with me? When I get to know people, I get to know, are we in the similar circles? Are we thinking similarly? Meaning like, like, are we both looking at lifting people up? Are we people of, um, I don't know, integrity, we people that we, you know, we can trust. It's, it's people I want to be around with. Yeah. And then you build those relationships up and networking. It's a two networking, social media, um, all of that. When you think about ROI return on investment, it is a two to three year investment. So think of these relationships. If you want to see the turnaround to see, you better be building that relationship. <laughs> for at yeah. least two to three years um some i i did a training here's a prime example i did a, a quick training for the Hmong uh women summit very quick and um i work with this uh, and i connected with a bunch of uh college students yeah. um at the time and i i like i said i did a a workshop around mentoring and year two years later um, I, I have a client from there that hired me to be their coach. So, so you see two, yeah. two years, awesome. think about your investment in, in networking, a two year turnaround and, and think about it that right now, someone may not need your service, but someone will. And so every person you touch, <laughs> I mean, not physically touch, yeah, yeah. Do that. <laughs> uh -huh. but like every person <laughs> that comes across <laughs> Make you sure you go out and touch everybody, all right, guys? Yeah, don't go out and touch right now. I mean, with COVID <laughs> we can't touch anybody at this point. <laughs> Six feet away, guys. <laughs> yes. Wash your hands. That you touch it. If you do touch them, wash your hands. Yeah, elbow. Any any person you elbow. Um, yeah. <laughs> make sure that um, you, yeah, make sure that you, it's it's authentic. And people will know. People know when you're not, you're not authentic, when you're not yeah. genuine. And make sure you give before you get. Um, so important. So these, these are little tips for you guys. Give yeah. before you get, I always give more than I get, and then you will get more than you give. <laughs> um, it's just like the word first you learn and then you take the L and then you earn, right? It's like that. Learn um, or so earn. Like, yeah. Learn. First you learn and then, then you, earn. then you earn. Oh. <laughs> then you take the L off and then you earn. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. So yeah any other takeaways from that that's that's good stuff yeah um yeah like my mentor always says you know if i don't know you i can't flow you right so i can't flow you means i can't flow money to you because yeah because yeah. i don't know you i don't trust you because we can see each other on facebook which i see a lot of you guys on facebook and i love just to one day meet you guys mm -hmm. um but uh if we meet in person that that creates a better glue where down the road you you know you might flow some money toward me you know or i might flow some money towards you because i don't know you know because when you see when you i mean what, what is it they see that within the you can you know a person within the first 30 seconds of meeting that person if they six genuine seconds. huh 10 seconds, seconds. Six wow seconds, people are judging you within six seconds people are making like a judgment of you whether wow. they're gonna be friends with you or they're not <laughs> say that again i need to capture that what is it? Six, six seconds. seconds. Within six seconds of meeting you, they can determine whether they're going to like you or not. <laughs> so you better put on a good impression. <laughs> wow. Within six seconds. That's the science. Six seconds. Awesome. <laughs> Hope you guys are catching that. Dang. Let's see. Um, all right. We're coming at the end of the show. Uh, guys, throw in your last questions here. My, my goes. Uh, oh, okay. Something about you have a good voice with Mom Radio. No, I'm not gonna be <laughs> doing. <it anymore. laughs> uh, uh, Archie goes. How many business have you used? Have used your consulting services? I mean, you don't have to tell them that, but you've yeah. done a lot, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So um, 50% is, is, I wouldn't say Hmong businesses, maybe nonprofit, right? Nonprofit organizations. But yeah, I have um, Hmong businesses as well. Mm -hmm. The gotcha. one that I told you guys about um, in particular, just one example, how um, she made 60% more. Yeah. Gotcha. And I think we can kind of end on that as a, as a segue to you got something special going up, coming up yeah. pretty soon, right? So can you talk a little about that? Yeah. So um, for all you guys, if you know, share, go to Faithful uh, Consulting. I have my business page too connected to my personal page, but Faithful Consulting, look it up on Facebook. Um, I have an event uh, I'm offering free coaching to uh, women, single moms, divorced moms, and it, it's really a gift, an opportunity uh, for for me to group coach, group coach um, women, and and be a support and and uh, just give them a space to. Sometimes uh, we just need spaces to clear our heads or clear our hearts or whatever we need, and so. That's what I'm offering during this time uh, for uh, for single divorced moms out there. It is Sunday from six to seven, just one hour every week. Sunday, you will get some support through coaching with my friend and I, Sydney and I, and yeah, we'll 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 see how that goes. But I um, that's that's the next opportunity gift that I'm giving to. Uh, our community. That's awesome. And thank you for doing that. Uh, you're saying single or yep, divorced single moms mom? Or divorced mom, you know, divorced. Um, okay. Still single mom. Regardless. I guess you're, you are single. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm not in that field. Yeah, anymore, yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, if you're divorced, I guess that's one way for you to provide a free service and then kind of go from there. So awesome. Um, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah. So faithfulconsulting.com. The other thing is I want to mention uh, is every two years I help one business, one business out uh, with a strategic planning. So, so just keep that in mind. So you guys can message me about that every two years. I do that. And every year I help one person out and I call it my project leading lady, but um, I helped, um, Mika, I mean, I help men too. There, you'll see some of the bios on on there. I don't have everyone's bio up, but every year I'll help one person, and it's pro bono. Like it's just mm -hmm. through my service, coaching, whatever it is. Um, and so you'll you'll see their success stories on there as well. So awesome! You're awesome. Um, that's it. Uh, we do have one segment of the show where we do ask one question. I ask one question, which is the same for all the guests. And that is, if I was to give you one billion dollars, what was the first thing that you'll probably think about doing with it? One billion dollars? Oh gosh, um, I would do um, all of my philanthropy <laughs> <laughs> work. Give me two things that you would do with it. <laughs> one billion dollars. First thing, um, first thing you would do. I mean, first two things you would do. First two things. So, of course, do more. Uh, I would just invest in my business. I love, I, I really love everything I do because I, I feel like the more I can empower other people to feel empowered and live like their best life, it creates like this contagious effect around. They, they affect their family. So their spouse, their family, their immediate family, and then their they become productive citizens of the community. And it just creates this contagious effect. And um, I, I would just invest in more of those opportunities for people mm -hmm. out there because I just think, why why can't we all, right? Why can't we all be happy? Why can't we all live that happy? We can, right? The, the, yeah. my, my answer is that we can. We can, we can all live that life. Um, so yeah, I would just invest in more opportunities to do, do this type of work for people. Gotcha. So that's the first thing. What was the second thing? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about you, just helping other people, huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. There you guys go. Yang Yi from Wasa. Appreciate it. Hey, so um, if any of you guys have any questions uh, that you, you guys are seeing this as a replay and had questions, go ahead and comment down. And can you get to them if you, you know? Yeah, okay. So maybe she'll get to it. 
Yeah. Uh, we can probably get her to answer your questions. And, but you, we can get a hold of you through, uh, we'll tag your, your website on on this this post. And I guess uh, I'll, I'll tag your name as well. So if they want to get a hold of you, they can directly message you. And uh, uh, I think he, uh, one of the things you are providing services, like uh, consulting, right? free, I think 30 minute free consulting too. Yeah. I think I saw yeah. on your website. So yeah. Yeah. if you guys just want to try, try her out for like, is it 30 minutes or something like that? Just a quick talk it, or something like that? It is 30 minutes, but usually I spend, and sometimes people just need that one hour and they have, they walk away with so many resources and ideas and they don't, they don't necessarily take up the service and that's okay. Yeah. Like to me, like, even if you just have that conversation, I am someone that truly believes the success of people is when they have that trust and the, that connection. Yeah. So, it's the same way. Um, you're interviewing me as I'm interviewing you. It has to work. You're not going to be successful if you're not working with someone you don't trust that yeah. can take you to that next level. I mean, it's just not going to work. And why? I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to be that person that um, that right. Just if you're, thirty minutes, you're not going to be. Yeah, done. you're not going to benefit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thirty minutes. Sorry, we're up. No, you're no, I'm awful. not going to be like you were done. Bye. <laughs> 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 voicemail <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome uh thanks yang yi um all right guys uh until then uh thank you for coming on to the show yang yi um and uh until then guys keep hustling all right yeah okay. all right keep hustling right. everyone all right